I'm Rick Johansson, and this is the Iron Echo Design Channel. Today, we're going to work on building a black and white dark watercolor world map using Inkscape. And here's a couple examples I made. This is more of a traditional watercolor like blue. Here's a rainbow. And then but I want to make this dark one. I've always liked these when I see them at like stores or on Etsy or something. So let's do one. This is meant to be a beginner's tutorial. So if you're working your way around Inkscape for the first time, I'll try to make it an easy step so you can follow to make this black and white map. Okay, so let's start with grab this create rectangles and squares tool and then just pull out a rectangle. Now we do want to have a set size. So if you look up here, if you have it selected up here, there's a width and then there's a height. If you want to follow along, just go to millimeters. So click on millimeters and then you can type in 1350, enter, and then go to height 800, enter. And all I'm doing is I'm just creating the actual poster or the, the background for the map. And right now I've got a fill. So the fill, if you don't have this menu, it's this paintbrush in the corner. So if you click on this, it'll, it'll pull this out here. And then I needed like a neutral color. Let's go to just like a simple, very light gray so you can just see the space. And then stroke is the border here. This stroke, it's like a random, let's just go to 6.0 and stroke paint black. All right, so we made our basic background there. Now to get the map, we're not gonna draw the map, but we need an SVG file so we can edit it as a vector file inside of Inkscape. And the good people over at simplemaps.com, let me pull it up, simplemaps.com, they have what we need for free. So if you go to the website, I'll put the link in the description. On the bottom, there's resources, click on that, then free SVG maps, world map, and then here it is. This is what we're going to use, and its license is free for commercial and personal use. So thank you. Click on download. It'll give you the file you want. I already have it, so I'll click out of here. And then when you want to bring it back in, they'll give you some choices. So I'm just dragging the file back into Inkscape, and I'm going to include the SVG file as an editable object. That's what we need. And then DPI, just keep it at 300, rendering none. And there it is. There's our beautiful map. That's the world. I'll just make it a little bit bigger. And now we can bring in our source file for the watercolor effect. And we're going to get that from a site called Pexels. If you haven't used it, here it is, Pexels. This is royalty-free images and photography work from some pretty talented people. We'll type in watercolor. And here's some watercolors that we can play with. So I like this one here. And this might, I visited this before. That's why it might, maybe it served up quickly. If you don't have this image that we're gonna use, if you wanna play along, I'll put the link in the description for this one. I'm gonna push download and thank you, Sergio. And let's get the file. Back in Inkscape. Now I'm gonna pull the file, the JPEG in as is, because for this tutorial, I want people just to be able to slide it right in. If you know how to resize an image, then do that, make it smaller, it'll make Inkscape go quicker. But I'm gonna drag in the picture just as it is. So it's gonna be big, image DPI from file, rendering mode, none, okay. And there it is, okay, that looks good. Let's save before we go any further. So file, save, that's just because since it's a big file, it could crash Inkscape, and we don't wanna lose our work up to this point. Because the next step is computer intensive at it with a big file. We're gonna to go to, click on the selection, then go to path, trace bitmap and this is to create a vector file out of this jpeg and the reason we're doing this is when you have the, the final product if you like it and it's a vector format you can scale it and make it bigger and smaller and it won't pixelate okay so you have trace bitmap click on multiple scans i already have it set colors and you want to be on eight scans and then smooth and stack should be selected but don't select remove background, so it's kind of a double negative. Just make sure remove background is unselected, and then update will give you kind of a view of what we're gonna get. And I'm not liking this view. Now the update is not a fully rendered final, what it's gonna look like, but I don't like that. I need more color variation. So I'll go to scans, let's try 12, and then update that. There, see, see now I have some, um, some more variation, some more color value changes. I'll click okay. And then I'm gonna come back because this might take three, five, 10 minutes. And if it crashes, that's why we saved. And I'm back. I did not crash. Did you crash? Hopefully, it did not crash. So I click on my image 
And then these up here, see these arrows, you can flip it vertically, flip it horizontally. I wanna just turn it one click so it will be like uh, horizontally so I can put the, the world on it. I don't need the source file anymore, so just delete that out of there. Maybe it'll save up some space. And here's what we're gonna work with. So I'll take my world and then drag it. It just vanished. That's okay, it's thinking. Okay, so it's sliding underneath. So then see these like books? I'm going to rise the selection to the top is what it's telling me. So that's what I wanna do. So I'll drag this over. And again, you can put it anywhere you want. I'm just gonna go for some, some of the texture here, maybe a little lower. So we'll zoom in. And if you really wanna get dirty with it, click on it. And then when you have the selection here, this is opacity. You can just lower the opacity. Then you can see what you're gonna get. And there's no, there's no rhyme or reason to this part. I just wanna, I think I wanna get some of these striations. Maybe that looks cool, good enough. And then just make sure you go back to the opacity, goes back to full. Otherwise that will affect the next step. And then the other part is I like the country outlines. I'm actually gonna get rid of them at the end, um, but you can you can take them off. It's this is all, the the whole thing is a fill, so you can change the color if you want. Um, but I like it at, at the at white. It's gonna change when we stamp it out anyway. But you can manipulate the the um, the actual world map. But let's go ahead and do the cool part. So I've got my world selected, and then hold Shift, click your watercolor and then go to Object, Clip, Set. Yeah, look at that, it's kinda nice. I like it. I like it already like that, if you if that's what you're going for. Actually, before we turn it into the black watercolor, while we're here, you can, you can do some stuff with this. So go to Filters, Color, and then go to um, Simple Blend, and then this will let you change the, the values and the shading and the, just watch, Live Preview. That looks pretty cool, like wherever, that's just random. You can move this around. It won't, it won't render, at least my computer won't render unless you unclick live preview and then click it again. It's pretty, that's pretty interesting right there. You could go with that if you wanted. And then let's see what happens if we, I have it on overlay. Let's see if we change it to like darken. That, that looks ugly, that's terrible. <laughs> so let's go back to, I'll try screen. Then, oh, that looks very nice, I like that. So, you know, it's kind of fun. You can you can play with, let's see what happens with blue. Eh. I'll go back to that. Well, it just doesn't matter because we're going to change it into black anyway. Okay, let's get this back on track. It doesn't matter what color you're at right now because now we're going to go to grayscale. So choose your world. Then we'll go back to filters, color, and then grayscale. And then this one's a little bit more confusing to play with because it's got red channel, green channel, blue channel. I don't mess with those. I just, I just manipulate the lightness. So on live preview, oh, I, I, I did this earlier. All right, when you click on it, it might look like this, like it's gone, or it'll be like a snowstorm or something like that. So this is the one you'll play with, just the lightness bar. And then what was it at 1.03? I thought that was cool. Apply, yes, I like it like this. Now, this is your choice now. You see how you have the country outlines? If you like that, keep it, if you don't, click on the world then control D will duplicate the world. And then that duplication, see, it, it just, um, it almost removes the lines all the way. And <laughs> I like this a lot. Let's put, let's put the, uh, where's our um, border? And there it is, let's bring this down and we'll change it back to the white background. And look at that. It's too, border too big. Somehow we got lost in the in the translation, but you get the picture. This is it. You can what someday when we're done with all this and we can travel again, come visit me right up here in the greater Boston area, or we can go meet in Hawaii or over any reach anywhere. But in the meantime, have fun with it and see you.